I'm just about to upgrade uh, one of my older domes just outside in front of the garage with uh, the latest CD62 4K Vari Focal model. Now, I've been at Vercada for more than two years and it's easy to uh, get lost with the new products and features that we have announced. When I joined, we just had three products, cameras, sensors, and access control. Now we have seven alarms, intercom, guest, mailroom. And even uh, those first three products have undergone iterations. We refreshed our whole dome and bullet series and added our first multi-sensor camera. So this made me think about the core principles that we use when designing products. Simple to use, scalable, secure. And I made this video just to show you how easy it is for me to install a Vercada product. First of all, as opposed to a traditional CCTV system, I don't actually need an MVR or any centralized storage. This camera has enough capability to record the footage, store it on itself, and furthermore, analyze data. We're using the latest Ambarella chipsets and enterprise-grade storage. Imagine if I had an MVR. Maybe it didn't support 4K cameras, so I had to change it completely. Or maybe I'm at maximum capacity and one extra camera means I need to go and buy myself an additional MVR. Or going from five megapixels to 4K means that all of a sudden I'm running out of space. So I have to decide either to drop my retention period, maybe go to less frames a second, or otherwise double or triple my hard drive space. With Workada, I don't have to think about any of that because remember the storage is on the camera and furthermore, we actually guarantee the amount of days that you're gonna get. So this, for example, is a 30 day camera that will record no more, no less than 30 days. However, if you're interested in more and you have a use case for that, we can offer up to 365 days on five megapixel models. How do we manage to cram all that data into a small storage device? We call that adaptive quality recording in which we will continuously record in SD and when camera sees motion, we'll also record HD on top of that. If you think about it, the useful parts that the camera sees are related to motion in the frame. And these are the moments that you actually want to have that high resolution. So let's unbox this. As I open it up, I get to see the dome itself. It does come with a protective film that uh, got removed a bit earlier. And on the bottom, you do have an install kit. And remember that all our cameras come with mounting plates by default, so you can mount them on walls, on the ceiling, and we do also supply a variety of mounts for different scenarios. Inside the install kit, I get a special Torx screwdriver that allows me to open up this camera, remove the back plate, insert my uh, RG45 cable. I get a desiccant pack because with the domes, you'll need to apply that to make sure that the inside of the camera remains dry and a couple of fixtures for regular walls. Now, once I remove it, I can actually expose the camera so I can tilt it and twist it. I'll do so after I put it up on the wall. I have a part here that will be able to seal the cable once it's installed, so I can quickly remove that as I'll need it open. And the part that says attach desk and pack here. Do not forget to attach the desk and pack as later on after you leave the site or a few days later, you'll start to see degraded image as moisture builds up inside the camera. Let's hop into command and I'll show you how easy it is to provision it. Now I'm in uh, my command organization and I'll be clicking the devices button to get to my virtual inventory. And instead of using the order number, I'll be adding the camera by serial. 
But before I do so, I need to select the site it goes into. Remember, sites and subsites are virtual buckets that will make sure that as your command account grows, the devices will go in their respective order instead of being jumbled together. Then I'll need to assign a address because by default, uh, all the devices will have our uh, San Mateo headquarters as their address. And remember that the time the device has is driven by the physical address that you set. And then instead of typing the serial number, I'm gonna use the scan QR code functionality to use my laptop's camera and scan the box it came in. All done. I see it already pre-populated the device with its right serial number. And one thing that I'll also be doing is instead of updating the firmware immediately, I'll make sure it does so in a few hours. And that is because I'll be taking this camera outside and I want just to validate it is looking in the right direction. And I cannot do so if the device is busy updating itself. Once this is done, I can go back inside the camera tab, select the outer site, and you'll see that the camera appears there. Okay, let's do this before it starts raining again. Now, this is the CD61E I'm about to change, and as you can see here, it's not mounted on the wall or on the, uh, on the ceiling here. It is actually mounted on an arm mount. The reason for this is that with domes, as a best practice, you should point them down. So when it rains, the actual droplets don't accumulate on the casing, but drip down. It doesn't mean you don't need to give it a wipe from time to time, but you'll have to do so less often. You won't be able to mount this just with the arm mount. You also need a pendant cap as well. So the arm mount goes in the wall, the pendant cap screws into it, and then the camera goes on the bottom. So I'm gonna use the Torx screw, to open the camera up and then remove it. I have removed the back plate as I don't actually need it with a pendant cap and I have attached the desiccam pack. Remember, I'm saying this again, don't forget about this because you then need to come back and install it as the image quality will not be good. A couple of other things you should know as best practice is make sure you give the camera a wipe because uh, if you're installing it like me without a protective cover, inadvertently you will actually touch it. And at night, the IR sensors will bounce back and create very, very strange reflections. Also make sure that there's nothing placed underneath the camera. I've seen it relatively often when people actually mount the cameras and there is a surface just underneath it that will again reflect the IR light and basically stop the camera from properly recording at night. So I made sure the cable is sealed properly and no water can uh, get in and I'm going to give uh, the camera a couple of minutes to boot up, register to the cloud and connect to my organization. I'm not going to put the outer casing on at the moment because I actually want to make sure that the camera is pointed in the right direction. So I'll be removing this hard shell and moving it about while looking either at my laptop or my phone. Once I'm happy with the position, I can close this back and reattach the outer layer. Now, obviously, there is also a way to check if the camera is connected to the cloud, and that is by the status LED. Any Vercado device has a status LED to allow you to understand the health of the device. It goes from orange to flashing orange. That means that the device is updating to hopefully solid blue. If it goes to flashing blue, it means that the camera is online, it's recording, I already cannot connect to the cloud because possibly something upstream is stopping it. Think about a firewall blocking HTTPS or NTP. These are the two ports that we need or some sort of a proxy that's trying to decrypt the HTTPS traffic. In my case, I can already see that the camera is blue 
so I can hop onto my laptop and continue the configuration. Okay, so uh, as it happened, uh, the camera was um, pointing in uh, the right direction, so I didn't have to mess around too much with it. So now I uh, hop back into command and, about, and I'm about to do a couple of uh, settings. Every time you need to interact with the camera, you either do it via this menu here. So if you're looking at potentially turning on WDR, uh, using optical zoom, for example. In this case, I'm quite happy with a um, wide view like that. But anything else when it comes to the actual storage itself, etc., is done in the settings menu. So let me walk you through it. Some of these are already pre-populated from the time that we actually added the camera to command. But scrolling down, I can see um, a, a schedule firmware updates function. So possibly I'll make sure that any updates are done throughout the day as opposed to the night. Obviously in your case, you might want to do something different, but for me, maybe 12 to 4 p.m. would be a good slot. The orientation, which I'm gonna just twist like that. Scrolling down the retention, I'm happy to uh, leave at 30. Again, you won't be able to increase this, but you can actually reduce it all the way to zero. If, for example, your retention policy might be less than the days the camera gives you. Furthermore, I'm definitely interested in motion events, but only when people have been seen, not interested in any foxes, any rubbish flying in the wind, etc. And I'm also interested only in my drive here. So if some somebody would walk on the street, it won't actually get picked up. I'm gonna leave this uh, to detect motion at any time because again, personally, I don't usually expect anybody else than myself to be in front of the garage, but uh, you obviously can set your own schedule. So if you're interested in possibly getting motion alerts after hours or in the weekends, you'll be able to tailor it here. The way that Vercada serves these alerts is uh, via email, SMS, or APIs. Tampering is turned on by default. So if I have somebody who's trying to again, unscrew the camera, shake it, hit it, I'll also get a separate uh, alert for it. And down to the bottom, I see that my organization default is to use the EU data centers for any archives or backups. As you can see here, there are various options and it's really up to you on a per camera basis to set what you require. I'll also be turning on advanced analytics. So this is where we can start identifying person attributes, detecting faces. Again, this is matching faces with others that have been seen on the system. The data still remains on the system itself and also occupancy trends. I use this camera uh, to test uh, certain features. So uh, in my case, I'm happy to enable all of those. Uh, but uh, in your case, if you're not interested, my recommendation is to keep them off. A lot of these features will require the camera to reach the cloud, send high definition images for further processing. So you're just basically wasting bandwidth for something that you're not using. Last but not least, cloud backup is a very nice way to automatically back data from the camera. I'm not interested in all the video, but only the video with motion. So now every time the camera will see motion, on top of writing it to the local storage, it will also send a backup to the cloud.